Good morning students. I am Prakash Tripathi and today I am going to teach you the first chapter of your book Vistas. The name of the lesson is the third level and the writer is Jack Finney. It is a scientific fiction and full of adventure, thrill and uh, suspense also you can say. Before I explain this chapter you must be quite aware of the chapter you learned last year the adventure in that chapter you saw that the main character of the story is transported to some different world uh, you can call a parallel world so that was also a science fiction and the ending part of such stories have a big twist or a turn and that twist is mind boggling you keep on wondering how this could happen. So let's read the story and find out. It's just uh, entertainment. It is just for a uh, entertainment purpose. You can read the story. If you start to putting many questions and raising many questions, of course, I will try to sort out the, the mystery of the lesson, but just read it for fun also and enjoy the lesson. The narrator says in the first paragraph that the president of the New York, he mentions the four railroads of America. First is New York Central and the New York, New Haven and the Hartford Railroads. The president of all these railroads would swear on a stack of timetable that there are only two levels on the Grand Central Station of America. So. Everybody knows that there are, in fact, it, there are only two levels. But the narrator says that he had been to the third level also. Now, third level, level you can assume or understand as a floor. I will try to explain you. Suppose this is a Grand Central Station. You enter from here. And from here, another road, a down road, goes here it's a subway way and here it is a first level and from there again it goes down and this is the second level so there are actually two second two levels in the grand central station but the narrator from here enters the third level which is just his imagination in reality there are no such levels only two levels are there two underground floors are there on the grand central station so naturally when he mentions this all of his friends started talking about him that what the hell you are trying to say how can there be third level there are only two levels so in such case if anyone says an, an absurd thing or extraordinary things the people will advise him to go to psychiatrist so he goes to one of his friend who is a psychiatrist and he tries to analyze his uh, uh, imagination of third level and he says that you are an escapist you are trying to escape from the harsh realities of the world and then he says that there is a lot of fear war worry and all the rest of it and it is just that you want to escape from all these things. The narrator starts wondering, I am not an escapist, I am not trying to run away from the harsh realities. But he says that my friends, every uh, my stamps collecting for example, that is also a temporary refuse from reality. He says that I have a habit of collecting stamps. So, will you call this a stamp collecting also a refuse to go away from the reality? Well, then he says that his grandfather also had the habit of uh, collecting stamps. And in those days, there was uh, a peace. There was not such kind of threat, worries and war, everything. Situations were different. So, his grandfather was not an es escapist. So, how can you call him an escapist? Well, in the second paragraph, he tries to explain how he reaches the third level. One day when he was returning back from his office, he was in a hurry. He wanted to reach his home and 
for that he decided to take the subway from grand central because it is faster than the bus he decided to go through the subway the underground road or a tunnel that is called subway he turned into the grand central station from wonderbit avenue this is a name of a street and went down the steps to the first level as i explained you in the diagram it's a very rough diagram from there he went down the steps to the first level and from there he tries to take uh, people take uh, trains like the 20th century then he walked down another flight to the second level from the first level he tries to go to the second level okay where the suburban trains leave from and then all of a sudden he comes across a doorway he comes across a tunnel and there he gets lost before he reaches the third level he says that grand central station is growing like a tree why does he say this that grand central station is growing like a tree because he had been in and out many times uh, and many of the time he is always found uh, finding himself bumping into some other place sometimes he reached a roosevelt hotel also so he wants to say that uh, the grand central station is like a tree which has lots of roots and those roots are pushing out the tree okay but he says that he never told this thing about uh, uh, about uh, to his psychiatrist friend and when he reaches the third level he saw that things were totally different there it was a new world to him because the things were not as he used to see in the present time there were the people who were having uh, different kinds of clothes they were uh, having big mustache sideburns and the station was dressed like 1890 1890 something like that uh, the things the station there was a man pulling out a gold watch from his vest pocket he snapped open the cover and there were spitons also brass sp spitons here means he wants to say that he saw the things which were found or heard 100 years ago so the things were totally different from the present scenario okay to make sure i walked over to a newsboy now he started wondering how come i have reached this is a story of a space a time travel you can say a person has traveled 100 year back so to confirm this he went to a newsboy and glanced at the stack of paper it was the world and the world hasn't been published for years the name of the newspaper was the world and he knew very well that this newspaper uh, had stopped publishing its paper the lead story said something about president cleveland and the, Amer the american president cleveland was um, 100 years ago in 1819 something now he started wondering how come this happened so he went to the clerk he wishes to buy two tickets for galesburg and when he went to the clerk the clerk started staring at him and then he noticed at the cash drawer of the clerk there were notes or currency of olden times and these currencies were in those times and now their currencies were totally different and the clerk threatened him mr why are you trying to cheat me i will send you to the jail and when he hears the word jail he got frightened because he thinks the conditions in jails were not good even in 1894 and he rushes back from there and he came home and he wished to get the currency of golden days means 100 years ago's currency and for that he bought old money at almost he could get from any coin dealer somehow he managed to get 300 dollars 
less than 200 in old style bills. Now he thinks that I have found the third level and to travel in that period he needs old currency. So from some coin dealer he bought 300 or 200 dollars to buy tickets. But since then he could never find the third level. Though he tried, he kept on searching for the third level, but he could not reach any more after that to the third level. He says that I never again found the corridor that lead to the third level at Grand Central Station. Although I have tried often enough, he means to say that I tried, but I could not reach there. Meanwhile, he gets back to his own work. And one day, he, as earlier it was told that he had the habit of collecting stamps. One day, he was fussing with his stamps collection and he found a first day cover. Now, I would like to tell you what first day cover is. Whenever a new stamp is issued in the market or in a country, the stamp collectors buy a stamp, take an envelope, put the stamp on the envelope and mail it. Mail it to whom? To themselves only. Means that the, po the postmark is stamped on the envelope and that proves the date. And nothing is written in the letter, in the envelope. A blank paper is sent. So automatically that first day cover comes back to the stamp collector because he writes his own address on the envelope. So he founds finds a first day cover. Remember that his grandfather also had the habit of collecting stamps. Now the twist is coming in the story and the end is a very absurd end I can say and you will also raise many questions. There is a mystery. Actually the paper inside wasn't black. Generally the first day cover has a blank paper inside it, but there was something written on it. Actually, it was there because sometimes someone had mailed it to my grandfather at his home in Galesburg. Actually, that letter was mailed to his grandfather who was living in Galesburg and the date was July 18, 1894. A hundred years ago date. Now what was written in the letter? See, Charlie. The letter was addressed to Charlie. I got to wishing that you were right. The letter says that Mr. Charlie you are you were absolutely right. You have been telling me that there is third level and I did not agree with you but you were right there is third level. And I have reached the third level. In fact, I am in Galesburg and I am enjoying a lot there. I am invited over for lemonade. Come on back, Charlie and Louisa. Keep looking till you find the third level. Now the letter says that letter exhorted Charlie to keep searching for the third level. And he means to say that you will reach the third level because it really exists as he has reached there. It is worth it, believe me. And the note is signed by Sam. And do you know who is this Sam? This Sam is the same psychiatrist friend of the author who had told in the beginning to the Charlie that uh, you are daydreaming. You are an escapist. You are talking about the third level because you really want to escape from the harsh realities or bitter truths of the world. And the same friend, the same psychiatrist has found the third level. At the stamp and coin store I go to. Then Charlie wondered how his friend reached there. He could not find his friend, the psychiatrist. He had left there and he came to know that Sam bought $800 worth of old style currency. Remember students, the narrator himself had tried to get 
200 old currencies by giving 300 dollars so in the same way sam had also gone to some coin dealer and had managed somehow to get 800 old currencies that ought to set him up in a nice little hay feed it was his dream uh, and grain business actually his friend who was psychiatrist whose name was sam wanted to in, indulge himself in a grain business and now with that much money he could have started a grain business in Galesburg so he is enjoying there he has reached there he always said that what he really wished he could do and he certainly can't go back in his old business not in Galesburg Illinois in 1894 his old business why Sam was my psychiatrist the last word reveals that the letter was written by Sam and some Sam was none other than his friend psychiatrist actually my dear friends students I would like to tell you that uh, this letter is just an imagination of Charlie actually the writer wants to say that he is a daydreamer it is a it is his uh, daydreaming that he has gone to third level and in order to prove that there is really a third level he tries to um, forge a picture he tries to create a scene that he gets a letter from Sam it is also one of the daydreaming of Charlie as he has imagined earlier so no doubt the story raises many questions how come the letter of Sam reaches the collection of um, Charlie and how uh, how could it uh, remain there for 100 years and how come a person living in 19th century uh, mentions the things of 18th century but as I told you it is a science fiction just read it for entertainment if you try to um, start discussing and putting lots of logic then nobody can explain you but it was a nice chapter nice thrilling and uh, full of adventure so that's the end of the story I hope you enjoyed the chapter thank you for watching my video thank you